The average price for a gallon of gas jumped more than 40 percent in the last year. That's according to AAA. Those rising fuel prices are causing a ripple effect across the U.S. economy. The expense trickles into everyday costs like shipping fees, lawn care, and, of course, transportation. Those higher prices are adding uncertainty to the economic recovery. And to talk about that, um, joining us now is Harrison Fell. He's an energy and environmental economist. He's also a senior research scholar at Columbia University's Center on Global Energy Policy. Thank you so much for shedding some light on these issues. And as we mentioned, gas prices are skyrocketing. What's driving the surge, and can we expect prices to come back down at some point? Well, the surge is really being driven by a confluence of demand and supply issues. On the supply side, obviously, uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine has disrupted Russian oil supplies as, as nations have moved to uh, put various sanctions on, on Russian producers. Um, but before that, we also had uh, some supply issues with respect to OPEC nations keeping their production uh, at lower than pandemic levels, as well as um, U.S. Uh, production being a little bit sluggish to, to respond. And then at the same time, we've had a, a, a great increase in demand as, as countries uh, move back to pre-pandemic levels of, of travel and, and mm -hmm. consumption. Uh, walk us through the ripple effect, if you may, Harrison. How uh, can high fuel prices slow down the entire economy? Well, obviously, fuel uh, use is is uh, a key part of, of our transportation and shipping uh, industries. Um, and so they're going to have um, effects not only for us consumers when we pay at the pump, but also for uh, industries as they ship their goods around. Um, and then for us personally, as, as we uh, spend more of our money on fuel for transportation, that's less money to spend elsewhere. That's going to uh, lower demand for other products, uh, which may affect long-run investments for certain products. Economists surveyed by the Wall Street Journal last month put the probability of a recession sometime in the next 12, month at, uh, 12 months at 28 percent. That's up from 18 percent at the beginning of the year and just 13 percent a year ago. Are gas prices, you think, contributing to the probability of, of reaching that, a recession? Certainly, uh, the higher gas prices will probably add to that uh, likelihood of a um, recession. Although it should be noted that oil price shocks like we're seeing now uh, do not necessarily uh, end in a, a recession. The, the academic literature around this has really shown that the um, oil shocks need to be sort of taken in context. That is, uh, what is driving those oil shocks and, and what is sort of the state of the economy when those oil shocks uh, occur. Now, we have a relatively robust economy right now, uh, a good labor market, uh, a good consumer uh, spending market. Uh, and so some of that strong demand um, may uh, shelter us through some of these high oil price uh, periods. We're talking to Professor Harrison Fell. He's a scholar at Columbia University. Um, the U.S. GDP fell 1.4 percent in the last quarter as the economy shrank for the first time since the, since the start of the pandemic. The stock market has also been struggling lately, especially the Nasdaq index. Yet consumer spending grew more than expected. That's continuing to drive our economic recovery. My question is, how do you interpret this apparent disconnect between the economic variables that I mentioned and consumer behavior? Yeah, well, well, part of that consumer spending being strong is that we do have inflation. So as prices rise, uh, as long as uh, the quantity consumed stays relatively constant, you're going to see an increase in um, the total uh, amount of consumer expenditure. Um, I would not at this point necessarily say we're definitely headed for a recession. The, the dip in uh, the uh, GDP that we've seen in the first quarter uh, I think is is still a little bit too early to say that that's a clear sign that that we're headed uh, for a recession. Uh, there's a lot of factors going into uh, what could be driving that dip, different sectors uh, reducing spending that that could lead to that. So I, I say it'll stay. At, I, I would say at this point we're still a little early on to say that we're definitely headed towards recession. Thank you so much, Professor Harrison Phil. Thank you for your time. You're welcome.